How's it going? Charles Bonston here. I have so many questions to answer and I'm going to go through as many as I can right now. Just two housekeeping things. I know it's been a while. It's been almost a week. Uh, the two housekeeping things is number one is if you go to iCharles.com, I put up a post every single morning, every single business morning or business day morning on something that really has hit me that I want to talk about but I put into writing because it goes directly into your email if you want to subscribe or you can just visit over there so it's totally different than the videos because the videos you get to hear and blah 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 the other one goes right into your uh, into your inbox and it it really actually it helps you on hopefully on things that may affect you but it also the there's like 50-50 why I'm doing it. One is that I, I really want to ingrain a lot of this and by writing it out and just making sure that I'm, I'm explaining it well, it gets ingrained in me as well as there's no point in me just hanging on to information that I read and I just want to spread the wealth. So I think that was the only one. Maybe I had something else. So go over to iCharles.com. The link is below on how to uh, check out those blog posts. I put up one every single weekday. All right, on to the questions. Lonnie Thomas says, this is on my last video. He says, Charles, I absolutely agree with taking action part. I have a question. I make $1,000 a month. I have $800 saved. I want to become an entrepreneur. If you were me, what would you do? So the guy's got, he makes $1,000 a month. He has $800 saved. He wants to be an entrepreneur and he's asking me what I would do. Okay, that's insane. <laughs> that is, I cannot, that is way too, you know, listen, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk yesterday said something very interesting is that if, if by a certain age you had a nine to five job and you haven't started a business, he said by 35 or 40 years old, you haven't started a business, he goes, it's not in your blood. Entrepreneurship is not in your blood. For me, I've always had the tendency, even when I was younger, to go out on my own. I had a, a small door-to-door -door sales company. I had a, a, a B2B marketing company in college. It was online retail. Like I wasn't making that much money on this. Like It was just like, I don't know, like a few hundred dollars a month, if that, max. Um, I had an eBay business, but I always had the tendencies when I was younger. And we didn't have the internet like we do now, the, the accessibility to put something viral like a video or a blog post or sending. We just had, we just had email. Um, we didn't have all this social media. So, dude, A, I don't know what you're looking to start. But if, you, if you've if you always had those entrepreneurial tendencies like I was just talking about to start your own business or do a MMM or multi-level or M MLM, multi-level marketing, then you're an entrepreneur. And the woman that was actually asking the question to Gary Vaynerchuk who said if you're 35 or 40 years old and you haven't started your own business, you're not a purebred entrepreneur. You may have entrepreneurial tendencies and she got offended by that. And if you think about it, a purebred entrepreneur would have started their business. And he goes on to say is that if you have an, an absolute, just incessant, just desire to not work for the man, in other words, don't work for a corporation, which is me, is like I would rather be broke poor in a rat infested room trying to code or start my next business in case something happens than to actually work for someone like he's like that's an entrepreneur it's not the money it's not the you're like yeah that's good if it comes but he goes if you're doing it just to do it to think there's freedom he goes you're not an entrepreneur if you're willing to take a risk so gigantic that you just because you don't want to work for a corporation he goes you're probably an entrepreneur i don't know much about it but listen <laughs> You, you only live once. I'm not going to tell you to do it, but I'm not going to tell you not to do it. That's that's completely up to you. But if you've had entrepreneurial tendencies, then it may be it. It may be for you and to do it. You know, I don't know how much it is for your startup, but um, or just transition into it. That's the easiest way is that keep your full time job, which is you making a thousand dollars a month. And then when you come home, that's your second job is to do your entrepreneurial business, which is what you want to do. Mark Goldsmith. Love the guy. Uh, he goes, I have a question on law of attraction. I hear by, uh, or I hear you by going a go-giver. Sorry that I'm not the ideal person to read, think, and speak. <laughs> I'll get better. It's the language you use. So he goes into uh, being a go-giver without any expectations of getting anything in return is the key to anything you want. So in other words, what he's saying is that to 
give without anything, any expectations of something in return, which is 100% correct. It, it, you, you like, this is the funny thing is, is like people will write down things like, I bought a drink and they owe me a drink or I I bought I did something for them like I helped them move they owe me a favor like that's not you actually doing something that you want to do for someone and giving out your time or your money or something expecting something in return that's not giving okay that's bartering that's 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 like a form of trade and yeah Law of Attraction is giving value as Gary Vaynerchuk, I know you mentioned him before, I highly recommend checking him out, is that you give, 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 ask. Give, 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 ask. Especially in today's Uber competitive world, no pun intended Uber, but uh, in today's world of just super competition between skill, smarts, money, time, um, ability, and the playing field is level. You know, you really have to give the superior product, the superior service, and give, 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 and then you ask. In other words, you give all this value and then someone says, okay, they gave me all this value and it's the law of reciprocity where you feel like you have to reciprocate someone for them giving you all of these things. It's like when people give out, you know, free treats in, uh, in uh, you know, like, a, like, I don't know, like a coffee shop. They give out like free little danishes or something like that or like little pieces or Costco. They give out food. You feel like you want to give something back, like buy something or buy more or buy a higher end thing. So, yeah, you have to give without asking for uh, something to return. However, make sure that you don't give too much, not, not give too much, but you don't want to be like used. You don't want to be a doormat. In other words, if you feel like you're just giving, 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 uh, you're, you don't have any fulfillment from yourself. So he continues, he goes, sounds like a tricky thing to do when the foundation of being this type of person is to get success on certain things. Also kind of, uh, I also want to earn a million dollars by 1-1-2017 or indirectly such as building 20 yoga, uh, yoga studios. Wow. Um, you got to start now. <laughs> if you want to do 20 yoga studios by January 1st of 2017 and or make a million dollars by then, I don't know what your net worth is. I don't know how much you're making, but you need to start now and you need to give so much value immediately. And this is the biggest thing is that like, uh, I just heard this from a video is that if you go from zero to a million dollars, you're going to lose that million dollars because you didn't you didn't get the skills on how to remake that million dollars. You know, you'll you'll see it all the time of, of musicians or someone that hits it big quick and then they get into drugs or they get into alcohol, they get into partying and then their their career goes down. However, the person that actually built it up over time and they collapse can rebuild it because they know the steps, they know the hard work, they know what they did there. So you don't want to go from zero to a million dollars. Yeah, it sounds good, but to be honest, if you don't get the, the skills and the, the mindset on how to rebuild it just in case something happens, it's all it's it's all a, a quick fix. It's like winning the lotto. They I think they have a statistic that 80% of the people that live win the lotto or bankrupt within five years because they don't have the mindset of how to spend the money, how to save the money, how to keep the money, and how to invest the money. They because it was given to them. And they don't have the education behind it. You know, that's why I'm for education and not just handouts or giving someone anything. Uh, like, I, I feel giving something, like if they're in a dire need, but to give someone consistently without them actually earning or understanding the, the value behind it, say money or time or service, it's all, it's all for nothing. So he's talking about just giving, giving, giving. Listen, if, if you're looking to, to, to make massive change, you have to make massive change. In other words, if you want massive change, you have to do massive change. If you want a body that's ripped, you can't just keep on doing what you've always been doing if you're overweight or obese or even chubby, you know? It, like massive change in your life and that's financially, that's in a relationship, that's in your job, that's in your business. You need to do massive change. You have to wake up earlier and you have to hustle. You have to you have to face your fears and work all day and into the night. You're going to have to sacrifice something 
uh, whether that's time with your family or time with your friends or going out. You have to eliminate things from your life like maybe drinking or overspending or going to those dinners or going to birthday parties or going to vacation. If you want massive change, you have to become massive change. You have to do something that has to do with massive change. So he continues this and he goes, um, he gives massive value to my students. So that means that you already have some yoga, yoga studios. I keep on saying yoga. Um, I hear two schools of thought on it. And from my personal experience on the focus of giving value has benefited me more than seeking certain dollar amounts. 100% is that a business will be sustained. That's why Amazon is so successful is that their customer service has never been done before in the history. Well, that and Zappos. Um, those are the two companies that literally say, try it. And if even if you screw up, we'll take the blame for it and we'll, we'll refund everything, including shipping, so they lose money. Like no company has ever done that. Think of the companies before that were comparable to Amazon, eBay. eBay, they didn't even have a phone system until probably recently. I, I used to trade on eBay. I have my account since I think 2003. For four years I did Five to 500 to 1,000 transactions, and I had some really serious issues when I was in college and I had no money at the time. And I needed, like, I got swindled out of money or, or, I, or I sent something back and then they returned it for no reason and, they, and it was broken or used and they had no system. Amazon has completely changed the game. And I just heard that, um, I think it was, it was somewhere in Forbes, is that everything is going to become so cheap, mass producing, um, 3D printing and, and the like will become so cheap is that price will be superseded by the relationship they have with the company. So in other words, people by 2020 will actually care more about the relationship they have with the company than they do with the price. Right now, price trumps most things, if not everything. You know, sometimes people will pay for, uh, pay more for uh, the relationship they have with the company, loyalty, but most people go on Amazon and they're like, I don't care who sells this or where it comes from. I don't care what shop from across the US or the world it comes from. I want it and I want it cheap and I want free shipping, you know? So massive value, yes, you have to give, 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 and then ask, give, 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 ask. Okay, Ryan Frazier goes on, he goes, great vid. Yeah, for some people I know, who are really into the law of attraction. It seemed that they really want things to fall onto their lap. Yeah, 100% agree right on that sentence is that the issue with law of attraction is that you're thinking about it and you're encanting it and you're visualizing. You're like, I want a million dollars. I want, I'm a millionaire. I am a millionaire. And the biggest thing is you have to say it present tense, not I will become. Don't say that. Say I am. I am fit. I am healthy. I am a millionaire. I own my own business. Like right now, like it's happened. And the problem is they feel like it's just gonna fall on their lap as Ryan Frazier says here. Uh, not to take anything away from the power of visualization of what you want in order to get fired up, but at least use the fire to take massive action. 100% agree is that you have to use the visualization for two reasons. One is that when shit hits the fan and you failed, you got rejected, uh, the bank pulled money from you, an order didn't go through, a client canceled on you or fired you or whatever, you know, when something really bad happens, you have to go back and say, my ultimate outcome is. And regardless of what happened, you still have to have that vision. So that visualization is super important. Uh, and the second thing is to always keep consistency. Consistency and momentum are the biggest things that I'm working on. I was, I was looking around for my phone. I'm looking at it right now. But I have something that reminds me every single day. Momentum and consistency are the biggest thing. And I, in, in the morning, I say that. It's, you know, every single day I get stronger and stronger and stronger or smarter and smarter and smarter or better and better and better. But every single day I get better and better and better. And have those as the incantation for you. Cannot recommend that enough. Uh, Julio Alvarez says, first, so I, thought, I think he's talking about first comment. Um, that's really funny because I don't have enough comments to uh, actually compete with the first comment, but congratulations, Julio, you have the first comment. I did like it, so. Um, actually, there's one last one, we're on 14 minutes right now. I know it's a lot longer, I do have a slew of other questions that I'm gonna be getting into. Roberto Stephenson says, 
A lot of stuff that you talk about is psychocybernetics. Highly, yes, of course. And I've mentioned that multiple times is that psychocybernetics is, uh, and it's obviously an amazing book. I've done a review on it. Check it out. It's essentially what you say it manifests itself in real life. In terms of what you see yourself and how you think of yourself, if you think of yourself as amazing and, and great and wonderful, not in a cocky way where I'm the, like, yeah, it, it is a little bit cocky, but it's in a way where you're still humbled by it. I have a couple of questions. You say that on your mindset that you start trying to talk to yourself into new patterns and mindsets through affirmations and visualizations. How long do you think it takes to change your limiting beliefs? Wow, this can be a whole video in of itself. Well, I would say the rule of thumb is that it's going to take about 10% of the time that you've had. So in other words, 10% of the time that you've had a habit. So if you've had a habit for a year of like over drinking for a year, it's going to take you probably about 20% actually, about two months of consistently not drinking. Or if you're overweight for 10 years, it's going to take you two years to get out of that because it's so ingrained the the neurons in your brain the the actual they've connected that this is the way it should be and now it's just going to act in consistency it's going to act in comfortability which is over drinking or overeating or not going to the gym or not facing your fears or not being bold not being courageous not making a lot of money whatever the case is is it's comfortable and the neurons have actually um, wired together so you have to rewire and then put in a new habit that's not easy so Number one is there's first of all there's no time frame. Uh, there is a time frame, and you'll see. You're like, okay, this is actually easier to not eat chocolate or not uh, skip the gym. But then you also have to know that it's never going to end. You're going. I catch myself every single day. I caught myself on this video saying that. You know, saying that I'm not good at reading, saying, thinking, and speaking. I caught myself right there. But that's the thing is that you have to continuously catch yourself. No, I am good at doing that, and then you'll become good at doing it. So number one. It stops when you're dead. That's really when it stops, is that uh, you always have to catch yourself from thinking negatively. You always have to catch yourself from, from the words can't, won't, not, it's not me, you know, uh, making, being a millionaire is not me, or I can't go to the gym, or I won't go to the gym, I don't have enough time. You know, those are all excuses. Well, what if you're, someone you knew was sick and tired, or sick and in the hospital? Would you make time then? Yes. So it's not really a priority. That's what you should be saying, is that it's not a priority. Once you call it how it is, then you could change it. He continues, um, visualization, how long? Okay, it's gonna be your lifetime. That's his next question is, is it going to be for your limiting beliefs? Is it for your lifetime? Yes, it's for your lifetime. When you stop correcting yourself, you're dead. So you don't want to stop correcting yourself. For example, if, you have an, if you've been overweight your whole life and that's the way you think of yourself, that's a perfect example. I was just saying that. Uh, and you see yourself as how long will it take until I am healthy is imprinted in your self-image and subconsciously start. So in other words, his question is, he, I don't know if he feels him, he is overweight or, um, you know, whatever. I'm assuming so because he uses it as an example. And I'm glad that you're actually catching yourself because you'll see it all the time is that I'm not that type of person. You'll go to a beach or you'll go to like LA or Las Vegas or Miami, these beach towns or these really hot areas, and you'll look around and say you're overweight or you're chubby or you just lost yourself for a couple of months or you're obese. And you see someone that's really fit and thin and whatever is you don't think that they want to eat like crap. Like that's a you're lying to yourself. If you don't think that the shape they're in is not like I wake up at 515 every morning. Do you think I want to wake up at 515 instead of go back to bed and not go to the like I wake up at 515 to go to the gym, but I want to stay in bed and uh, sleep more. But I've convinced myself this is who I am. And that's the biggest thing here is that. It depends on how long you've actually been looking at your life like this. If you've been looking at it like uh, 10 years, that's a long time. It's going to take at least a year, a year and a half for you to consistently go on a healthy streak and imprint it into your mind. Imprinting it into your mind will probably take a couple of months, but actually doing it consistently is what the hard part is. So he keeps on going. He goes, how long is it going to take? And your self-image. So you have to consider yourself, if you see someone that's wealthier or in a better relationship with their kids or their spouse or they have a great body or whatever, 
and you look at them and you say, oh, that's not me, or I'll, I'll never make a million dollars, or they, they just have a, a great relationship because of something else, like something stupid. You don't think they don't have insecurities like everyone else? Of course. Look at the prettiest girls online. They, they put up a completely f photo filtered, you know, like the best by a top photographer and they put it on Instagram and they have a million followers. You don't think that they're insecure about their looks or how much they weigh or what, you know, of course they are. They, they might be more than you because that's what their, their image, their self image is tied to is their, their self image is tied to their looks. That's the biggest thing is that you can't have your self image tied to something on the outside. You can't money, uh, a relationship, a spouse, your body, anything, it, your business, you have to have it on the inside. And then when it goes right, you're like, okay, cool. You know, like I'm, I'm glad I'm fit and strong. And the other thing is, when you see someone like that, that you, you want to emul emulate. Number one is, uh, you can't say that's not me, because you're already, you're already failing. You're already saying that that's not you. Uh, and the second thing is, you can't put their success on whatever it is. It could be their body or their money on something else. Oh, they just, you know. Uh, they have money because their parents had money or they, uh, you know, their parents were in shape. So that's why they're in shape. Okay. They still need to work on it. They still need to say no to things that they want to eat like chocolates and cakes and things like that. And they still have to wake up and go to the gym and make good decisions. They're not the success of their parents. They're the success of themselves. So, and then he goes, secondly, and this is the last thing, because we're already over 21 minutes. That's insane. Secondly, starting from literally nothing. A perfect example is that, like, I've noticed myself is that I have a lot longer hair now. And it's like a flow or whatever. And I really like it. I've always wanted a flow and things like that. I used to be jealous in high school of, like, lacrosse players and football players that had really good long hair. And that's the biggest thing is that, like, I, I don't want to be tied to this. In other words, like if I went bald or I, you know, I can't tie something on my, my self uh, confidence or my self assurance cannot be tied to something on the in external. Like women may tie it to their legs or their arms or their hands or their hair or their breasts or their face or their teeth like something on the external, but as they age, they're like, oh my God, my teeth are yellowing or my hair is getting, it, it's not growing as fast or it's not as thin and finesse, finesse, what, I don't know, whatever, whatever women look for. The biggest thing is you still have to have that self-conscious regardless of what happens to the outside because if something happens, you get hit by a car or something really bad happens, you could lose it all and you're still alive. But the biggest thing is you have to tie it to the inside. So he keeps on going. Secondly, starting from literally nothing, no income, and just getting into personal development. How much progress do you think it will take in the first year or two? The first year or two, everything will be new. Um, I'll actually have this as a separate video because this is an amazing question. Anyway, subscribe to the videos. I'm really sorry this went 22 minutes. Uh, I just went on a tangent. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. Go to iCharles dot com for daily posts about things that I feel are re relevant in my life and you know to be honest they should be relevant in yours because it deals with health wealth love and happiness as Ty Lopez says anyway have an awesome day I'll talk to you guys soon